So at long last, Blackboard has released an update to their calendaring system, which has been largely unchanged since I first encountered the Blackboard product back uh, when it was called Course Info version 2. Um, that's been over a decade ago, and now their calendaring tool has undergone some very significant changes. Um, it's a new version of the calendar that they have released for use with Service Pack 10, um, so institutions that don't upgrade won't have access to it yet, but frankly it's almost worth the upgrade just to get the calendaring tool. Um, there's three ways to get to it that I want to point out here. First of all, on the uh, tools box on that first tab you see on logging in there is a reference to my calendar on the list and on this new control menu up there there is a calendaring entry as well um, but then a lot of students don't pay attention to those things when they're in a course they want to see a link to the tool they want right on the course menu and you can add that as well it's just a tool link using the calendar tool, give it some nice obvious name. Okay, so students can get to the calendar in any of those ways, and of course, as an instructor, you also have a link under Course Tools to the Course Calendar. Um, don't make the mistake I did and just look for Calendar. It's a Course Calendar. Uh, but when you go to the calendar from any of those different ways, here or even from here, what you're going to see is just slightly different views of the same thing. An overall calendar that you can set up appointments on and see what information is available on. It is truly across all of the uh, information available in your Blackboard system. So, for example, the account I'm logged in with now is seeing the institution level calendaring, which there isn't any of, personal, again, this is all blank. These are courses that, I, that I'm an instructor on and courses that I'm a student on, um, and it doesn't actually distinguish between which access I have to which course here, but you'll see in other screens it does actually uh, indicate which ones you can post things to. But for now, briefest overlook at what the new calendaring tool looks like on the surface. Now, whichever way you use to get to the calendar, uh, it's the same little interface to add an appointment or an event to the calendar. You use the little plus symbol that's up in the upper right corner, and it asks you to create an event. So you give it some title. In this case, let's say, um, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a little hokey, but uh, in this case I'm also going to add that to my personal calendar. But this is where you would control which place that you are posting at. Now, none of you should have the ability to post at the institution level, but I'm a sysadmin, so I have that. Um, since I got to this calendar from the menu up top, I defaulted to the personal calendar. If I'd access the calendar directly from one of my courses, I would have the ability to, uh, it would default to that course. Now, these courses on the system, I'm actually a student in with this account, but again, I'm a sysadmin, so things are a little different for me. You should see your personal and the other courses that you have access to on the list, um, assuming you have permission to post to them. All right, so you've got start and end days and times. This interface is a little different than anything that you might have seen in Blackboard before. If you click in there, you could, of course, type what you want it to be, but I'm lazy, so I'm just going to set something that's going to start um, at, oh, why don't we make this 6.05 p.m. And I'm going to make it go until... 7.30. What the heck? Okay, notice the little sliders for controlling the, the time. Uh, there's also an option for making an all-day event. And then, of course, the event description, which there is a uh, limit on, a 4,000 character limit on the descriptions. But, let's face it, if you're wanting to type more than 4,000 characters to describe this calendar event, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, then you save, and it shows up in the calendar. Now, since I posted this to my 
personal calendar, it showed up in this kind of a, well, on my account, defaults to kind of a hot pink fuchsia looking thing. Similarly, if you go into the calendar directly from within your course, you'll see again when you go to add that, that it does default to the course because I accessed it through the course. So I'll say first course event. Um, and we'll just make this happen tomorrow. Uh, notice that you do have to set the day that something's going to end. It doesn't automatically jump to match the day of the, the start event. Um, helps if I type things right. Okay. So you add that event, it shows up in the calendar. Now, I'm in as an instructor on this course, so I can see this event that matches the color of the Sandbox Course 1 that I posted into, kind of a deep green, and the pink one, which is the personal calendar entry that I put. Um, now, obviously, I can see both of these because I'm an instructor in the course and this is a personal calendar entry. However, if I access the system as a student who is enrolled in this course, and I go to bring up the calendar, you'll see I do not see that event that I'd created with my instructor account as personal, and the um, course uh, event that I had put into the course that this uh, account is a student in uh, appears to be a different color because that happens to be the color selected on this list of calendars, okay? So you shouldn't um, describe things to your students in terms of what color calendar event they're going to see because that may not be actually uh, what it looks like on their screen. So you should tell them to look for the event on a given day and time. Clicking on the event does show the details of it. Um, and since this is just a student, I don't have any options to change this event in any way or anything like that. I can only view it. Of course, I could create events, but since I'm only a student, I only have access to the personal calendar for creating things, okay? So bear in mind, if your students are putting the entries into their own calendar, that's going to be their personal calendar, so you will never see that either. So at this point, you're probably saying, well, Dave, so what? It's a calendar, yeah, it's prettier than what it was before, and you've got better interfaces for adding events to the calendar, but so what? It's really not that big a deal. Well. I uh, went ahead into my sandbox course here and I added some content in. I added an assignment and I added a midterm and I set due dates on those. And I also went into my grade center and I added a column manually and set a due date on that. Okay? That's the kind of typical stuff that you might be doing with your course already. Um, but I made the uh, extra effort of checking that box and setting a due date for each of those things. And now, when I as an instructor go into my calendar, Oh look, events on the calendar for each of those due dates. I can see that this midterm, which isn't even available to students right now, has a due date of the 22nd at 5 p.m. and I even have an option for editing the test, okay? But it's not even released to students yet. I see this assignment here, which has the ability both to change it and I'll even be able to grade submissions to the assignment. Just by clicking on that, it takes you into the Grade Center. How cool is that? So in as a student now, I could come in here and look in this information area. I see the assignment. I don't see the test because it's not released for students yet. Um, I even see that there's new things that have been put in. So here's the stuff that I did in the course that the student can see. Um, and if I go to the calendar, First of all, no personal entry, and of course these are red because that happens to be the color of that course for this student. No entry for the test because that test is not available at this time. But I do see, oh, here's this assignment, and it's going to be due on the 24th. And, gee, I can just go straight to it and submit my work straight from the calendar screen, okay? Now take a moment and say, ooh, and then say, ah because that's pretty darn cool. And now I'm back with my instructor account and I'm going to hop into the course here and I want to change this because I don't want to wait around until tomorrow when the uh, 
test becomes available, I'm going to modify the availability and say that now it's going to become available uh, in the past, in fact, because it's actually late afternoon today. Um, so I'll submit this change, and now the test is available for students. So now, when the student goes into their calendar, they will see the entry for the midterm, and they can go straight to the screen that lets them take the test. Okay, see, take took me right into the course, right to the test screen. I could hit begin and take the test without ever having to go through the intermediate steps of navigating through the course. All right, that is a well-integrated calendar. Okay, so I'm back in as an instructor, but before I came back in, I used the um, student account to submit something to that assignment and to make an attempt on that test. And so now, as an instructor, I can go here and I can see, hey, I'm going to grade the midterm. It takes me right to the grade center. I can see here's the assignment that was submitted. Here's, you know, say, I didn't do well on the midterm, but I did do an attempt on it. And so even for the instructor, the calendar can be a link to the various activities that they're going to do. Um, even the manual grade column has the ability to jump straight into the grade center for that course. And bear in mind, I've just been doing all this in a single course. If I had had multiple assignments uh, set up for multiple courses, I'd have multiple entries in that calendar date. So, you know, things might end up feeling a little bit crowded, but uh, you'll just need to learn which colors end up going with which course, and it should be fairly smooth sailing. And, you know, it's got normal stuff. You want to see just the day? Okay, so if you're looking for a whole bunch of events on a single day, you might want to go to that view. You might want to just see the week. The default behavior is the month, but it's an all-new interface, and it actually does something now to tie in. How cool is that?